Hey, what is going on guys? This is Eli from Robux and this time I'm going to show you how to throw basketballs or basically any object using Dynamics in Cinema 4D. So I will be using the scene we built in the previous video. So if you want to follow along, I recommend checking out that video first so you can start off with the exact same scene as I have in front of me right now. If you don't want to build it and just want the project file, you can download that on our Patreon page. So let's get started. So first of all, I clean up the file for me. So we only have what is necessary here. So that's the floor, the whole hoop and the basketball. So our first thing we can do is start adding some dynamics on the basketball, for example. So right click on the ball and go to simulation tags. And we could use a soft body, but it can get a bit glitchy. And I don't think it's really needed, so let's just use a rigid body. Which means it doesn't deform when it has an impact on, for example, the ground. It just stays in the shape of a perfect sphere. Now, if we would play the animation to start using the dynamics, you will notice it just drops in the void. That's because the floor is not set up with dynamics just yet, so we need to do that as well. So let's right click on the floor, simulation tags, but we don't want this to drop as well, so we won't be using rigid body we will use the collider body, which means that it is just solid and everything that falls on it will just stay on top of it. We are also going to add the same tag on the basketball ring. If we add this tag on the whole group, we also need to check some of the options down here. So let's apply this to the children as well. So every part is having this tag. Okay, so maybe we can already try out what happens if we put this ball above the ring and see if it actually goes through. So you can see it doesn't go through, it just stays on top of here. That's because the shape is being calculated as just a flat uh, disc right here instead of a hole inside of it. Maybe we could also go to the shape here in the dynamics tag and set this to a static mesh because it's not moving. That makes it a bit easier in the calculations. So let's try again and you see it wants to go through, but the net is still a bit too solid, but we will fix that in just a minute. Okay, so let's go to this net. That's a cylinder with two deformers in this case. And we could add a dynamic stack on this just straight away. So let's try that. But we will have to make some adjustments later on. So for this one, I want to use a soft body simulation. So let's use this one. By default, it says use deformed object, so that's good. So that's good, but uh, it will not do when we render this. So if we would play this in the uh, viewport, it will work. But if you render to the picture viewer, it will not work. So we are going to fix that straight away by just selecting the net and the deformers, making sure you're on frame zero and right click and connect objects plus delete. That merges everything into this one object without having to calculate the deformers. So what you could notice is that the net falls when we play the animation. That's of course because it's just a separate object and it is not connected to this ring. So we kind of need to stitch that to the ring. What I found to be the easiest way is just using a vertex map. So what we're going to do is making sure the net is selected and going in the point mode. We're going to select all of them by pressing Ctrl or Command and A. Let's go to the select menu and set vertex weight. You don't have to change anything in here, just press OK. And you notice we have a vertex map. That's the tag right here. You can double click it if it isn't active for you. Right now it is red. Um, you could say that everything that will be yellow is being soft and everything that is red will be solid and sticking to the place we want it to. So when we double click this, we get some more options down here. Right now it is set to absolute. So if we drag on top of here, you can paint on it to get the right color. Actually, it isn't that bad just yet, so we can start painting just this bottom row. You can notice it kind of tries to snap to the polygons. So if you have too few polygons, you will have to subdivide it a bit more. Also, if you hold Ctrl or Command on the keyboard, it inverts your painting brush. So we want this top row to stay red and all the rest can become yellow. Okay, so I think this is good enough. So that's our vertex map. So now we are going inside of our dynamics tag and let's go to the soft body tab. And in here we have the mass map. So we can drag the vertex map inside of this 
And now uh, let's try this out. If we play the animation, you can notice it stays in place and the ball goes through it because it's soft now. So that's great. We can also adjust some of these properties of the soft body. We don't need a lot of adjustments or you just play around with them and see what happens. I noticed we can zero out the first three of them and we also can go to um, the damping here and set it to zero as well. And all the rest should be able to stay at the defaults. So let's try this out again. So what you can notice is that the net is hanging a bit more, it's a bit softer and the ball goes through. So let's go to the ball, it's dynamics tag. And maybe we can set this to be triggered once it hits something. So for example, the backboard right here. So that means it doesn't fall straight to the floor when we start the animation. That way we can animate the ball first. Um, we're also going to set some of the properties here. So the bounce can be a lot larger, maybe 140%. That makes it behave a bit more like a basketball. So if we drop it here, but with the immediate trigger, you will notice it bounces nicely. So what I'm going to do now is having this uh, tag back to the collision trigger. I'm just going to move the ball somewhere down here. I'm going to keep it lined up straight with the hoop. And I'm just going to make a first keyframe at frame zero, for example. And maybe let's go eight frames. And I'm going to move it just something like about 20 centimeters uh, upwards. You kind of can imagine it like a throw. So we don't know what will happen, but that makes it interesting. So let's play this animation now. And uh, I did something wrong. We need to set the trigger at velocity peak. So that means it releases it once the ball is at its fastest point. So you can notice that's way too slow. So we can move the frames closer to each other instead of just reanimating this. Okay, so it comes a bit short. So what we can do is adjusting the keyframes or the animation, or we can just move the whole animation closer to the ring. We can do that by going in the animation mode, maybe move the frame back to zero and just move the whole thing a bit closer. So this is basically a thing you can play with. So that went through. Another thing you can also do in the animation of the ball to make it a bit more realistic is going to the last frame and adding a bit of rotation to this. Of course, make sure you're in the object mode. So that will make the ball spin when it is in the air, kind of like it does in real life. Okay, so that's one way to do it, but maybe you want a bit more control so you can say where it goes exactly and what kind of curve it goes. So we can do that with a spline. So let's use the spline tool and go in a side view. So we're going to try to make this bounce off the backboard into the net. So let's put a point on the backboard and I'm also going to make it start somewhere here and maybe make it curve like this and hit escape to stop the points. Once that's done, we can add an align to spline tag on top of the ball and we can drag the spline in the spline path field. And that kind of depends on how you've drawn your spline, but you can set the position to 100 or 0 in order to make it start at the front. And if it isn't aligning to your spline, you will have to increase the segment number to maybe one. It just happens sometimes. But for most of us, it will work straight away. Okay, so what we can do now is having just this tag enabled, not the ball. And we have the start animation. So we can click this button here so it turns red at 100 position right now. And maybe move ahead 10 frames and go to, in my case, 0% keyframe again. And I'm also going to delete the keyframes of the ball, but make sure the tag is not selected because it will also show these keyframes. And let's try play the animation. <laughs> so that's way too fast because we have the dynamics still set at velocity peak. So let's turn this into on collision. And let's try again. So that's still way too fast because we will have to move the keyframes further apart. So let's try maybe 30 frames. So that seems to be working. It looks a bit stiff right now because my computer is having a hard time recording and playing the animation at the same time, but it should work just like this. Another thing you can do, of course, is going in the tag right here, right clicking on the position, 
going to the animation menu and showing the f-curve of just this animation. If it doesn't show up, you can drag it inside of here. And we have this kind of line. This should just be fine, but you can also go up here in the f-curve menu and show velocity. That way we get this small line right here. And um, you could adjust this to be even stronger so it slows down a bit at the end and the start. So for me, it is not better, but it is something you just have to tweak. I'm not going to do this on video right now because it takes a lot of tries to get it just right. So the last thing I would like to show you guys is how to make some kind of basketball cannon. So it automatically keeps spawning balls that are shooting to the hoop. So we can get rid of the spline and the align to spline tag. And I'm going to create an emitter. It should be somewhere here in simulate particles emitter or you can just press shift C and type it in here. So we have this emitter. It should be somewhere here at the center of the scene. So let's move this up. And I'm already going to point it towards the net. So all we need to do now is dragging the ball inside of this and it should be spawning these balls. But let's go to the emitter and scroll down in the particle tab and make sure we have show objects enabled. Let's try this. So you can see it is creating a lot of these right now. But maybe a bit too much, so let's make the bird rate a bit lower. Maybe just one. That will spawn one every second, I guess. I'm also going to make sure we have a bit more space in the timeline, so let's go with 500 frames. We also need to extend the emission, so how long it will keep spawning these, to 500 frames maybe. And maybe we don't want them to all stack up, so let's keep them just alive for 150 frames. So after 150 frames of spawning, it will just go away. And I think we need to set the dynamics of the basketball to, to be triggered immediately. So you can see that works now. But it will not reach the basketball hoop right now. Um, we can't do this with the animation like we did it with the first example, so we need to use the emitter its power to get it all the way to the hoop. So the only thing we need for that is the speed. So let's go with something maybe like 500 centimeters. It kind of depends on the scale of your scene. So that looks stronger. So I'm going to rotate this so it points up. So now you can just move around this emitter to kind of play basketball and see when it gets in the net. But right now it is still a bit random because it is very large. The spawning zone, the zone where balls can be spawned is way larger than the actual ball. So what you could do to make it more precise is going in the emitter right here and just making it very small, something like one centimeter. It is way smaller than the ball, but it will still spawn the balls. We can also play with some of these values here for example, have a bit more variation speed, so one comes out faster than the other. We can also add a bit of rotation, uh, so it spins around. And we don't want anything to happen with the scale, because a ball doesn't get smaller once it's thrown. So what you could even do is building a tube around this to make it look like some kind of cannon. And put the emitter inside of it so it moves together. And that's how you can use an emitter to also play basketball. So these are three easy ways to create automated animations using Dynamics in Cinema 4D. Right now we used a simple basketball, but maybe you can come up with some other purposes to use this kind of technique. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you liked it and I will see you in the next video.